And uh, might as well just get this uh, uh, <laughs> a lightning mood. I do have a fanfic that I read on uh, Nightflower's live stream that I thought I should share because, well, there wasn't very much people to, in there. So, and I thought that it would be nice. And you share the link with me? Perhaps I could provide voices again. Uh, don't worry, I'll take care of it. Uh, <laughs> we'll trade. <laughs> okay. Sweet. If you say uh, so. I ended up downloading this, so I can't remember where the hell it is. It's mm. called Rainbow's Love to Learn. Oh, dear. Oh, boy. Question. Clopfic or Grimdark in this case? Clop. Oh, I God. figured as much. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's, it was said to be humanized, but it looks furry-ish, you know. A combination, more or less. Jinko or whatever. No, no, no. Not a Jinko. You know, I'll just stick with furry. <laughs> it's short. Don't worry. <laughs> and with Nightflower, you know it's got to be good. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's I mean, not by Nightflower. I was Nightflower. with stream once. I read yeah. that the cursed fan fiction Flutterbox. <laughs> yeah, he has mentioned that. Uh, it was writ. Let's see, did it say it? It was written by Firefox69, and... Oh, oh, so that's where it is. <laughs> let's see, uh, I'll just copy this and uh, you just, uh... Oh, well, I'll just copy this and, like, uh, put it on there. Oops. Oh, cancel. I need... Gonzo, quit derping. Copy, and I'll just, uh... Quit being a derpy. Uh, I had derp. to show Pen Story Sky. I'm kind of busy at the moment. Uh, another friend of mine. We'll look later. And, uh... <coughs> maybe after this story, though, I think I should bring in a Zengo, but, uh... You might have to go, Dust, because, well... Eh, I don't know what... He's okay. I don't know what's got on you, but he... Probably doesn't like to be in the same room as you. Eh, Nothing, no enough. offense, and oh well. You could just communicate through the chat. Are you still on Same. it? Okay, after the story then. I don't mind. I'll be able to uh, I'll post it on here, and I guess on this. Um, and when when you uh, Minimus also wants to join in, but uh, not the not uh, maybe later when I swap out Dust with Zingo Dash, maybe. Maybe. Mm. Minerus is a, a, a friend on Steam who uh, gave me some nice gifts for TF2. Uh, bless his heart. He gave me some of the uh, some uh, Im some uh, items for a Scout, which I I don't use very much, but I do the best I can. Anyways, it's called Rainbows Love to Learn. And you will not believe how the story begins. Hmm. Rainbow Dash was eating dinner with Cheerily, the love of her life. What? Really? Really? It's a Rainbow Dash cheer it's a Rainbow E fanfic, really? Is this pairing not even existed yet? Fuck if I know. Apparently. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but let's go on. Let's see, the love of her life. Yes! Looking back on her life, she had no idea how any of this had happened in the first place. And oh my luck, the author probably didn't even know either. But with things going the way they were right now, she didn't want to question it for fear of ruining a good thing. Rainbow Dash was slightly faster than her less energetic Earth Pony mare friend, and as such usually finished eating first, which, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, as it meant that Rainbow could take her time observing cheerily. The subject of examination could have been anything from the way she chose to chew her food to the way she sat while she ate, but was more often than not simply her checking out her mate. Er? Hmm... So far in their relationship, they had built up a nice little amount of trust between the two of them and had, on occasion, shared an intimate moment in the bedroom. But tonight would be different, for Rainbow Dash had promised herself that when she had made that fateful purchase in a seedy, in a seedy shop in downtown Ponyville about five hours ago. Hmm. I'm gonna save what it is for later, I already know. Hmm. I didn't even know there was a downtown Ponyville. Oh, well. Where the buildings are a lot closer together. Oh, well. The mm. item she had obtained from that unpleasant, grimy transaction was, she had been guaranteed, sure to spice up any relationship and rekindle the excitement. 
As soon as she heard those words, her eyes had immediately lit up in anticipation of the look on Cheerilee's face as she brought it out and started to put it on. While she had been thinking, Cheerilee had finally finished her food and the two mirrors began to gather the dishes and put them in the dishwasher, cranked up to 11 of course. What the hell? I, I don't remember... I don't remember a dishwasher having an uh, having like uh, being set up like a amplifier. I don't know. Oh well, let's continue. Yeah. Rainbow Dash chose to break the silence first by saying, "So, cheerily, I have a surprise for you, and I can't wait to show it to you. But in order to do this right, I'm gonna need you to go upstairs and lay in bed whilst I get ready. Deal?" Oh boy. oh boy, here it comes. While cheer when Cheerly answered the in the affirmative, Rainbow Dash raced on ahead of her to make sure she could get the item in question mm -hmm. out of hiding without revealing what it was before she was ready. Once she had hooked everything together just perfectly, she decided she would wait a little bit to drive up her her part drive up her partner's anticipation of just what the surprise might be. Finally, after a couple of minutes, she checked one last time to make sure that not even a single hair was out of place on her coat. Well, I guess that's furry now. Making sure the thong she was wearing hugged her ass in just the right way and that the bra just barely covered her nipples. Questioning. While at the same time leaving <coughs> enough to the imagination to mystify and excite the woman she had done all this for. As she exited the master bathroom and entered Cheerilee's sight, her patience was immediately rewarded 100-fold as she saw the fuchsia-colored mare's jaw drop at least a good 8 inches, coincidentally roughly the length of the strap on that Rainbow Dash was now sporting from her crotch. What? Really? Oh, God. It's a strap on dildo. Take it in, folks, through the tailpipe. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What are we going to do with you, Nightflower? <laughs> what am I going to do with you? He can't handle the frothiness. Uh, Rainbow Dash now said, I decided to start on the small end, and perhaps if we give it some time, we can work our way up to a bigger size. Hmm? Oh, God. It's going to be one of those situations. Too dumbfounded to form a cohesive response, Shirley was only able to nod her head in agreement as she slowly closed her mouth and violently patted the bed next to her, prompting Rainbow Dash to hop in and snuggle up next to her, making sure that Shirley could feel the warmth of the toy between their chests. The two mirrors began to slowly kiss and stroke each other's body. Rainbow Dash paying its extra attention to her lover's mane, which she just couldn't get enough of. Well, you know. After a few minutes of this cuddling, Cheerily laid her head on Rainbow Dash's shoulder as she sat in her lap and motioning that she was ready and <coughs> willing. She started to lift her hips up just far enough for Rainbow Dash to get the strap on in place. And when the cyan mare gave the signal, she dropped her hips, impaling herself on the toy. Cheerilee was left to gasp at the intense feeling of having such a warm and realistic feeling object filling her out so perfectly, large enough that she could feel it and like the way it felt, but small enough that it wasn't uncomfortable like many of the stallions she has been with during her college years. So apparently Cheerilee was a college slut. Apparently. Rainbow Dash, for her part, was feeling pretty good for it, too. Not just because, not just because she was making her lover feel this good, but also because there was a secret she had not yet told to Cheerilee. A strap-on was actually double-ended, so every time it pushed into Cheerilee, it pushed just as far into Rainbow Dash. To tell the Ooh. truth, 
Rainbow Dazz was enjoying it far more than Shirley was. And great. Someone just messaged me on Skype. What? What? Do you have TTT? What the fuck is that? I don't know. Let's continue, I guess. Hold on. Let me... I'm Wolverine mean, you son of a bitch. Not interested. Go away. <coughs> well, I will say this much. It's a pleasure to meet you, Inverted. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, let's continue on. Sounds good to me. <coughs> and, let's see. And to tell the truth, Rainbow Dash is enjoying as far as more as far more than Shirley was. Okay. Eventually, Cheerley's hiss began to tire, and feeling this, Rainbow Dash pushed her onto her back, and without missing a beat, completely took over the thrusting, using powerful muscles to move even faster in and out of her partner. Cheerley felt bad for just laying there and letting Narnie do all the work, so she in turn used her mouth to suckle on her breasts, alternating which ones she sucked on, and using her hands to stroke all over Dash's sleek little body. Remembering so how sick. weak the Pegasus was to ask play, one of her fingers found its way into that puckered up little butthole, causing Here her to comes. thrust in and out in a very erratic pattern, unable to think straight. The result of this combination of action and reaction was a pair of pleasantly surprised and very much exhausted bears, as they collapsed in a sweaty heap, covered in each other's juices, and yet being perfectly content. With this result, as they drifted that off into a slumber, feeling closer than they had in quite a while. Their last thoughts as they wandered into the land of dreams was that they would be doing this again sometime very soon. The uh, end. Yeah, That wasn't too long. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Nightflower. Certainly what isn't interesting. What did do without you? Indeed. Obviously, obviously put me up to this shit. All the damn fucking son of a bitch and man. Uh, easy, Gonzo. Uh, easy. Take it easy there, buddy. All right, now to see if Zenko just came back. Oh wait, that's not my message. 